What's up? This is Easter for Awesome. I'm Daniel and today finally we're going to print my latest lino cut, the Vida Diem print. I'm going to make a very small print run at first. Then we are going to continue fixing a little bit of the printing press that I uh, started reworking some parts in the last video. Then we are going to finish up the printing, making a little setup for drying, putting the stamps on top, all this fun stuff. So yeah, let's get to it. Let's start with cleaning a little bit. Get the paper out. And let's get the other prints of the series as a reference. This paper. So I'm down to the last sheets. So I will probably only be able to have a small print run. One, two, I can only print six. That's unfortunate, but that means I have an excuse to visit the art store tomorrow, which is in itself always a good thing. Thank you. Sorry. We don't walk on the prints. No, we don't do that. Right there is Titus and she's mainly angry at him. So Yuki and Cleo are sisters and they are the older ones and this is Titus. He's the youngster and they are more often than not an very annoyed with him. So now we can make a reference sheet for the position on the print on the paper and put this under the transparent mat. Now we should probably put it in the middle of the paper. Three, number 33. 297 by 2. We have our block ready. Still have to decide on the color and I think I will just go with the brown from here if this is the first print in the center and it is more a geometric piece so it fits as a centerpiece I think and we have these with the figures on the sides with the with the similar color I think that is going to be a nice series this way we will need this as a color reference and then clean this glass board Now let's try without color or anything, just get it through the press and back. Looks good. Already has an imprint without any pressure. Now that might be a sign that 
with all these blankets that it is too much pressure in the press here. But it didn't move at all, so that's a good sign. This means we need to get the color out. So normally I have the press stored back here. Now I need to move it out to be able to um, move this bigger print bed through there, of course. But I think this works really well. I can reach here, I can reach here, and then I can um, have this area here as an area to put color on the block again. Maybe I use the other half of the of this plastic for this area. This might be a good idea. Here I stored a misprint. It's good, so we can also have a test print with the final paper. It is a good even impression, but it has all everywhere this little microstructure. Let me see. Might be that there was just not enough ink on the block. Or is it just the paper? Or not enough pressure. Let's try one more with the same paper but with more pressure. With this new setup and the new blankets and all I will have to get all of this by trial and error. Now it is engaging and then we make one, two. Let's make more. Make three. Looks kind of cool, but more or less the same as this one. So this time with a little bit more color and a little bit more pressure. One, two, three. Yeah, we're getting there. So this was the the last one and this is the new one. Still not perfect. So let's ink it up another time once more. And now we will use the old misprint on the real paper here.
That's even worse. Now let's get even more pressure. Yeah, that's it. Pressure makes the difference. So this looks good. Now I gave it even more pressure, but it looks worse and I think I simply don't have enough ink left, so it's too dry. No cats here today, sorry. Better! So I guess that's it for today. Tomorrow I can go buy new paper. So we got to clean up this. Let's count how many turns we have here, pressure wise. That's one, two, 10, 11, 12, 12. Mm, I think 10 might be enough. So let's try and remember this for tomorrow. So now I would like to put this somewhere there. But then of course these runners will get loose and this felt also. So how can we fix that? Maybe we have something we can like a rubber band really big one we have something we can use here yeah that might work Okay, little update on the press situation. Yesterday I just made this rubber strings so I can hold the press bed and the blankets together. And also I fixed the, the lino runners here with just a little strip of double-sided tape onto this plastic sheet. That way I can just take the whole thing off without these runners jumping around and if I 
want to print something where I don't want these runners because it is a different height or I don't uh, want any runners at all, then I think I can uh, just get rid of this plastic sheet. The other thing that I was thinking about is with the, with the length of this bed, it makes this downward slope even bigger than I would prefer it if it, if it was a little bit straighter. What I want to try is to just turn around these shelves here. Then I have these here that are uh, made for stability so it won't go this way. We can use that. I think they are a little bit too high so they are slightly more than a centimeter and I think that is it's tough to say but might be more than we need here but I would be willing to sand this off a little bit. Sometimes you have to use your head to solve a problem, so... So let's see if this goes through and up again. Definitely bending the plate this way. So we should shave these off. I need to cut these roughly in half. I'm about a fourth of the way in on the first one of the four. And now I'm kind of committed, but got to say, this is quite a hardwood, probably oak or something, I don't know. It is um, stained. But man, it takes a while. <laughs> So let's try these out on the press. I think that's definitely much better. Okay, now that I made these little paddings here, then um, it is a little bit tilted upwards and that helps to the, the printing bed not to go down so easily. So I think that's also a good addition and now
No tickers. Don't walk on the bridge. So, wonderful. Now all that's left to do is to um, frame this print and find a place on the wall. We have the other two prints of the series here on top of each other and I don't have any other space where I could fit three prints so I think we will have to stack them on top of each other. I always try to find the picture frames in a store where they sell used stuff. I found this one, which is quite nice. So I think since the first one, the Memento Mori print, is, um, is the one that stands out a little bit because it's blue, I can use um, this one for this print and then use the white frames for the um, for the two brown prints for the Tempus Fugit and the new Vida Diem print. Right, looks good. Maybe like that. All right, so that's it. I think these um, these are good for the moment as they are. Yeah, quite happy with how it turned out. This piece took me so long and spent so much time with it. It's a good feeling of having it done, but also looking at it from a little bit of a distance now, um, I'm quite proud of this print. I've spent a lot of time with carving and illustrating these details but also with planning the the values around the figure and the um, and the the light and the dark spots and having this darker frame with the glowing light center and this dark figure in the middle also the elements that happened to make it into the final artwork, um, I'm happy with this and uh, it feels good having it done. So of course if you want to get one of these you can head over to eastofawesome.com, I'll put a link in the description of course, and um, you can order one of these or one of the other prints. I will definitely make them also available as a set and thanks for sticking with me to the end of this long journey. I've learned a lot again and, and if you liked the video please do me a favor and have a wonderful day and perhaps eat some ice cream today. See you soon.